you guys, this is Rob from Gay Guy Plays, and today we're poised for penetration when we get dressed to kill with our prowling princess, Ivara. Now, this was yet another episode that I took a bit more time to get out, simply because of the fact that Ivara has a couple really cool coloration options that allow for some very dramatic transformations. However, some colors can be a bit finicky to use on certain body parts, so I really wanted to sort out some solid recommendations to get you the best results. Now, Ivara currently has no alternate helmet, however, the previous dev stream has teased that she will be getting a super cool looking Robin Hood inspired feather cap in an upcoming patch, so be sure to keep an eye out in the market for that one. If it follows the same trend as the rest of the alternate helmets, it should run you about 75 plat. Alrighty, so after I played around with a bit of Avara's colors, I found that there were two basic ways that I personally like to customize her. She'll either have a lighter base with a richer accent hood, or she'll have a darker tonal base with a lighter accent hood. Now, while the rest of her is pretty easy to common sense out, it's her tertiary tone that can be a massive pain in your asshole. So let's get the big stuff out of the way. Now her tertiary color selects the bottommost gradient on her forearms and under boob, the intersections on the patterning of her hood, as well as the lighter portions on her legs and stomach. Now the big thing to keep in mind here is that the legs and stomach are always going to stay washed out, while the under boob sections will always take on a lot of the tone. If you're using lighter shades, this won't necessarily be as obvious, however once you hit the darker tones, the contrast is very apparent. So unless you want your frame to look like a sweet tart, I would highly suggest using very muted tones, whether it be on the lighter or darker end of the spectrum. If you plan on going on the dark side, I would suggest using muted mid tones, as they won't kill the patterning on the rest of the frame. Alright, on to the fun part. Her secondary color, aka the hood, at least in my opinion, should always act as an accent tone to her base, as it dictates the gradients on her upper body, the top of her forearms, and fills in the patterns on her thighs. The big thing to keep in mind is that this blends in with her tertiary color, so you really need to play around with the both of them to see exactly where your overall look will end up. Now honestly, this is where you can take some risks. If you're working with a lighter base, I would personally stick to gem tones, however, for the daring, some of the mid-tone brights do look quite fantastic. On the other end of the spectrum, if you're working with a darker base, while I personally love the way pastels look on it, for those looking to be a bit bolder, go apeshit and unleash your brights and neons. Just don't fucking bring them around me, because I would personally love to keep my eyesight. Her primary color dictates the inside of her hood, the inner frame of her thighs, as well as the various connector points found across the frame. To be 100% frank with you, I have not found any shade to suit this better than a near black tone. Now, the color you select for this should be a dark version of whatever the tertiary tone of this frame ends up being. So if you decide on a light tan for the tertiary, the best primary tone would be a rich deep brown. Next, we're going to hop over to her accent tone, which dictates the patterning on her hood, torso, arms, and thighs. Now, the same rules apply for this one, as darker shades will always work better. If you want to make it easier for yourself, just use the same color you used on your primary. However, the rules can be bent on this one. Going a shade lighter than the primary will create a little more dimension, or even selecting a tonal variant of the shade you're currently using can add a little more interest. For example, you can use a deep navy on a green base, use a dark brown on a pink base, or even a dark teal on a gray scale. Now, last but definitely not least, her energy color dictates the details on her faceplate, quiver, biceps, the top of her hips, as well as the area around her connection points. As always, this is personal preference, however, aesthetically I much prefer a shade that acts as an accent to her secondary tone, as these two shades tend to be the most vibrant of the frame, so it's best that they complement instead of compete. Now, let's get dressed. So all in all, I must admit that Ivara has probably been one of my favorite frames to customize. From her stylized gradients to subtle variations in her patterning, she gives a ton of options to play around with. And while color selection on some of her sections can be a bit finicky, her design and general theme lend themselves extremely well to both muted and more vivid tones. So whether you prefer to stay subtle and silent, or if you're more inclined to walk on the wild side, Ivara has the ability to evolve into the perfect predator. So thank you all for watching another episode of Dress to Kill. If you want to continue the Ivara trend, be sure to check out her episode on the rundown, as well as my snapshot of her Exilus Quiver build. 
Now, don't forget to do all the things that I ask you to do at the end of every one of these, and as always, stay drop dead gorgeous. For those of you wondering, this is one of the many reasons why it's taken me so long to get this dress to kill done. Oh, the joys of Monday traffic. Bye.